Hey, what's up guys? It's another episode of Watch You Strapping. These are not watch reviews. They're just a quick wristwatch check of the day with a aftermarket strap. Uh, just to show the pairing and uh, yeah, just have some fun with that. Uh, maybe give some people some ideas about potential strap options for themselves and their watches. And uh, I am on the Seiko Prospects SBEC 005. This is a, I believe a 50... 50th or 60th anniversary um, model uh, of um, the speed timer. Uh, the exact reference, uh, I want to say 6138-8001 or 2. Um, uh, yeah, but it's not an exact, you know, uh, copy, but there are lots of elements on here that they really paid close attention to the details of which they translated onto here. It's just primarily the dial layout is, is not exactly the same uh, in terms of the uh, that, that part of the aesthetics, but if you really look at all the details, the tachymeter, the applied indexes, the handset, the uh, chronograph seconds, the chronograph sub-dials, um, there wasn't a running seconds on that one and uh, it had a day date at the n at three o'clock. But almost everything else about it, the pushers, the uh, general case shape and stuff, uh, the box crystal, it's so much of it is, is there. I think uh, this, they did a lot. Um, it's one of my favorites, if not uh, my favorite, <laughs> of the sort of uh, reissue or anniversary editions of uh, some of their speed timers. I like it more than, say, the, the last two that they put out. Um, fairly recently uh this is right now december 2023 and those came out i think earlier this month if not maybe late uh um november so uh yeah uh those those are all right i don't did really not sure if i dig the bracelet and uh, i don't think uh, a lot of the dial elements are as faithful a translation as this one has been Anyways, this is on a Rios 1931 uh, leather strap here. It's got some contrast stitching. Uh, I believe it's a German brand uh, to make some pretty nice and fairly affordable, uh, uh, you know, strap options. Um, and I decided to give this a try. I was looking through my uh, strap box. There's like tons of 20 millimeter straps I have from all sorts of times and occasions that I bought them for other watches or and whatnot and I just wanted to find something uh, that I haven't tried on this watch before and originally <clears throat> and it got me thinking actually when I was doing this and I have been thinking about this fairly recently within the last year or so um, how important strap thickness is uh, proportionately to a watch I think a lot of people don't really have to consider that and I think for the most part it's it's not that big a deal but in extreme some extreme cases it does um, so I had tried this on a uh, basically a, a suede rally strap that I it's from Deluxe actually I custom made for my uh, Tag Heuer uh, Solar Graph Aqua Racer uh, the titanium version you can see in my video from previous looks perfect match for it because that watch is thin it's got a matte finish so it kind of matches the matte suede color uh, or texture of the, 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 the leather for that strap that I had custom built for that and all that. And it's, I sold that watch, loved it, but I am in the course of reducing my watch collection. I'm trying to focus on, on something right now. Anyways, so I still had that strap. I wanted to keep it around for reference, uh, even though it's perfect for that, that solar graph, which I made it for. It could work for other watches, that, uh, and I, I think it would work fine with this. However, that the way I had that one made it was uh, on the thinner side and it's pretty light it's not the weight that's the problem but the thinness uh, it works great on the Aquarius because it's a relatively thin watch but this kind of a thick boy I mean a lot of mechanical uh, chronographs will be um, especially automatic ones um, they just are for the most part at least the ones that are quote affordable more affordable um, such as the Valjuice base movements but this is running an 8R I want to say it's a 46 but <laughs> and I, I forget the exact reference for the this but it's a column wheel 
vertical clutch chronograph very cool uh very accurate <coughs> great movement anyways so uh it was too thin for this watch like i looked at it from the different angles and it just you know it just like the made the watch sit even higher than it normally would and the the the, the watch strap from at least like some back angles when you're looking down at the th th thickness profile or thinness in that case it just seems like doesn't look balanced and i had thought about that before with uh, a smaller watch i had a stoa uh, marine classic small seconds it's a limited edition from uh, seoul korea uh the little what's it water watches it's a little boutique there uh that sells watches and it's, it was a nice one you look at back in my uh, old video it's 36 very thin i think I'm pretty sure it was at well under 10 millimeters. It might have been around 8 or 9. It was just a mechanical hand wound movement. But when I had bought, uh, it had 18 millimeter lug, lug width or 18 millimeter straps. I had bought a set that I thought would look great on it. It's actually kind of similar to this style, uh, ironically. Now that I think about it, it has like this kind of fold over uh, stitched uh, leather thing. Trying to make it look like a, 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 almost like a bun style because of the layered effect over the strap here. Right, this one piece of leather here that kind of has like a, a a bun effect, especially when you look at it from this far. But it, uh, the benefit is it doesn't actually have any leather that goes underneath the watch. Uh, it just keeps it nice and close to the watch, close to the wrist, and doesn't raise it off of it like a lot of bun straps would do. And I don't need it for a watch of this profile. Uh, and also that watch uh, that I was talking, I was talking about, the Stoa pretty thin it could probably use a thickness but i i didn't necessarily think it needed it uh, you know added layer of leather underneath and i like that style that 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 strap was it was very similar to this kind of style but it was in a it was black too but it was in a different kind of leather but anyways that one because the watch was so thin the strap was actually too thick for it it made it look like it had really broad shoulders to try to describe how it looked visually to me and it just ultimately I, I couldn't get along with it. it just looked too big for the watch especially being that watch was kind of small and especially that it was thin and so in this case i had to beef up the the strap and so uh yeah i took it off the rally strap i was trying last night and i looked around and i was thinking you know what why don't i try it on this one this one has that double layer it certainly has enough thickness and i think it works you know it needs a bit of a thicker uh strap to hold a fairly robust you know pretty fairly substantial size watch i mean this is 41 millimeters and i think overall for that size uh with the dial ratio and especially the way seiko cuts its case and a lot of the height is in the crystal to be honest um uh, it actually works smaller than you'd think it's actually pr really nice wearing uh, very comfortable and up and an issue but yeah you got to get a i had to get a strap that matches the thickness profile of the case and i think this works you know uh you've seen a lot of vintage at least of racing watches motorsports style chronographs right uh paul newman for example in his uh, daytona right you've seen him pose with a, a, a i think like a black bun strap i've seen uh nina rent as it's a race car driver's uh, model wife, <laughs> I guess, from the 70s. Uh, the, the, it's known for wearing uh, his uh, Universal Genève uh, Compax Panda Dial. Therefore, it was nicknamed the Nina Rint. And there's a famous picture of a really cool black and white, I believe, and uh, photo. And it's, she's kind of posing there, I think, on the track and uh, has uh, that Universal Genève Panda on a, on a bun strap. And so, yeah, that look works uh, for motorsports watches as well, of course. I think they originally were designed for pilot watches. But anyways, motorsport racing watches, yeah. And I, and I figured this could kind of give you that look, you know, for the most part. If you look at it this way and that, it has that kind of layered look to the leather on the strap size. But, and it kind of widens, wider than the case, or the lugs rather. So it looks like there might be a piece of leather expanding beneath the case but it doesn't so anyways i think it looks pretty cool and it works so uh there we go that's that's what i got um what do you guys think uh i have another one in a lighter like a more of a uh, tan color i think it'll look pretty nice on this too but yeah uh, i was gonna try this and see how it goes christmas eve um uh, i felt like 
it is, this is back on rotation and I just wanted to give uh, show off another pairing and something that I haven't done before and just again strap changes keep the watches fresh and interesting too so that's about it thanks for watching and uh, I gotta get on with my Christmas Eve day got things to do but I wanted to film this really quickly so Merry Christmas Happy Holidays whatever you guys celebrate so uh, let me know uh, until then enjoy your watches and stay safe later